The Night's Watch and the Struggle Beyond the Wall. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Journeying north, we find ourselves at the furthest reaches of the seven kingdoms. He's so quiet, man. Jesus. Beyond. Uh, the wall is home to the Night's Watch, which is personally my favorite uh, place to play in CK3 Aegon. And one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite is because it has a mix of different mechanics that really change how the watch plays. First and foremost, the watch is incapable of attacking feudal paramountcy realms, which means that we cannot expand southward. That's nice. That, would not that makes sense. sense. We're supposed to protect and guard the realms of That's men, cool. not attack them. Additionally, Turn it louder, you idiots. Oh, can I hear him? Dummy, dummy! Turn it louder. I put away my mic so I'm not too loud. Just stop complaining. Range beyond the wall, but limit our options for actually con conquering and holding land beyond the wall because that's sort of the point of the wall itself is to Makes be total sense. the barrier between Very us nice. and the wild. So. Uh, one way that we can see that is by utilizing the struggle mechanic. Oh, cool. The struggle mechanic is something that exists uh, uh, with the... That's from the Iberia DLC, man. Face effects. Current face opportunity. Next face progress. That is so cool, dude. That is so cool. Uh, that they have a wall mechanic. Iberia expansion in DLC. Damn. And it's something that we can actually take advantage of because... Thank you, uh, Manash. Thank you, man. The game. Uh, we haven't made too many edits to how the struggle progresses and why the struggle progresses because the triggers to move the struggle forward are pretty good and in what our playtesting has told us is that it actually can result in the kingdoms beyond the wall consolidating under a king beyond the wall. So the struggle is split into two groups of participants, those being the involved and those being the interlopers. The involved are every single wildling kingdom and they will fight amongst themselves until they get to some sort of stage where there is a king beyond the wall and they can really start focusing their efforts on conquering south of the wall. In the meantime, wildlings will still have access to different types of CDs like uh, and playing raiding, wildlings is, um, sounds mad fun, dude. Uniting so them and then take the wall and run away from the White Walkers. Uh, and make their way back north. <laughs> Additionally, the Night's Watch is listed as an interloper. Now, I will miss the role play that as the leader of the wall, I made an alliance with the Free Folk to destroy the Seven Kingdoms. In the base game, interlopers don't actually do all too much. They're people with one foot in the door of the struggle and they don't really have access to all of the benefits and hardships and challenges that the struggle provides but we decided to work i cannot wait for this shit man you see we have the interlopers as the primary antagonists of the struggle people whose job it is to keep the struggle moving forward and we do that with two different cds for the moment right now we are have the i really hope that these characters are placeholders man the characters are super wrong this is craster I mean, he's younger though, because it's uh, uh, Robots Rebellion. To range beyond the wall, which allows us to uh, remove control, development, and have the chance to destroy a building. Ah, you have a you can go be a ranger, which doesn't take anything, but you destroy their growth and stuff. And a target. A random target. building is destroyed. But we also have the ability to undertake a great ranging beyond the wall. And a great ranging beyond the wall allows us to destroy duchy tier and higher realms in order to... That is geniusly done by the developers. The wall doesn't take anything. You just always go there and fuck people up. Force that is genius. The wild Very nice. do not have single air succession. They do not have primogeniture, which means that... If that top tier title is lost and that ruler is not able to bring it back, that realm will shatter and it will be back to square one. So they're really powerful ways. <sighs> very to interesting. Keep the wild language. Seems very hard to balance that, but it sounds uh, amazing, dude. The issue is, is that, as you can see, the north is a very, very large place, and so this is going to be a tall. It's going to be such a big map, man. Watch. You can literally spend the entire game just in this region, and south there's so much more. Additionally, when we go and siege down a particular, any particular counties up north, we have the opportunity uh, to do a few things, which I'll show now. So we'll declare our war, we'll call our armies up, rally them at Castle Black, and what you'll notice is, is that even though we are close to Castle Black now, if I move over here, 
there's only a few ways to actually go around. So my army will not move in between Castle Black, uh, in between where we were. In the wall looks wall. amazing, by the way. Through Castle Black. Oh, this is going to be so sick, Shadow man. So we'll <sighs> north, a lot of placeholders. King's Scott armor looks especially little, bad, so but it's all placeholders. That province down, destroy that army. And then we are pro prompted with this uh, event, which obviously has not yet been localized. Um, when we are ranging beyond the wall, we can be ruthless. Remember, the Night's Watch really does not view wildlings as men, or at least very few people within the Night's Watch do so. So we have the option to imprison all the valuable inhabitants, wow. uh, to fill ourselves, imprison everyone within the complex. We can kill all valuable inhabitants, kill everyone inside the tribe of Craster's Keep, right? And it's a lot of dead people. Say, ah, you know, it's fun. So in this case, we are going to uh, wipe out Craster's Keep entirely wow. and choose to force our demands and end. The Craster's Keep is literally done, man. It's completely dead. Completely and done. That is a generic ranging. Now a great ranging. Uh, we can try and undertake that in a little bit. But what we will do first is, we Fuck is take a going on. Where does he live, man? Types. What so are these the background noises? Uh, of the Night's Watch is a non-dynastic succession, and it also gives us access to one or two cool things. First, we have the ability to have a personal steward instead of a first ranger. That's so cool, Night's man. Watch. Do not. <laughs> He's in Detroit. Second, we are able to appoint commanders of each tower, so these titles are fully revocable. Um, I really hope the game is uh, as hot as uh, CK2 Game of Thrones. It was a very hard game. I hope this is not too easy. Uh, and lastly, for succession, what we do is if we go to our realm tab, we take a look at our election. This looks a lot like the HRE's. I kind of got it now. Okay, Night's Watch. Cool. The neck. What the fuck? Oh, the crossing, man. Thank you, Yak Tervia. Let's take a look at the neck. The Wall of Frey. AKA my internet is dead. Oh my fucking god, man. I we can simply right click and what do we got? We have made our way south back into the seven kingdoms, but safety is not necessarily secure. That's the map looks so unbelievably good, man. Of the neck. A massive and treacherous bog that separates the north from the rest of the seven kingdoms. To convey the sort of danger that is uh, that comes with being in this area, we have two principal mechanics. So what we'll do as Lord Frey is we will raise all of our armies. So we'll do the late. And from here we will a bit laggy, our way up to Moat Kaelin. So well, Moat Kaelin even has its own animation. The causeway, which is this elevated structure that runs through the length of the neck, offering a safe passage without <sighs> any effects to our supply. But if you notice, as I hover over these other provinces, I have no There's paths, dude. In my armies. That's pretty fair, considering that it's pretty hard to move horses and supply wagons through. Uh, dude, look at all. This is all counts you can play, man. Oh, my fucking God. Thank you, Palatazak, for one year, brother, man. So Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Causeway, but he made paths, dude. That's so sick. To, uh, make our way uh, oh. west towards Flint's Finger, or if we need to siege down provinces within the Neck uh, against the ferocious Cranon. But I don't see any uh, villages in this area. The supply limit is starting to come down, and we won't start to suffer effects until we stay yeah, out Yeah, they made the King's Road, bro, that you actually can walk across. Intended. But what we're trying to do here is we are trying to trigger an ambush event. Now, an ambush event happens when a hostile or a non Cranogman army is working its way through the neck and comes across a group of people who aren't particularly happy to see them there. So what we're doing now is we're just walking around and waiting for an ambush to happen. I got excited there uh, as my son comes of age. So. When an ambush happens, we get this pretty ominous event. All well, the fray looks uh, funny. The localization is beautiful. I highly recommend that you uh, that you pause the video to read through it. Uh, but when we acknowledge that this event has happened, a small war will be declared on us by a group of Cranogmen. So we'll rally our troops to the cause. 
and you will see that's a cool man of uh, 500 and that's very cool dude men, uh, start fighting our troops in the middle of the bog now for especially large armies this is not going to be particularly impactful however when you get into battle like we see just now there is an opportunity for our knights to get injured or if you're commanding your army for you to get injured so we'll quickly dispatch with this moving an army along the king's road is more realistic and we're not going to venture back out. i think that king's road mechanic is amazing dude i think that's genius well, his entire fucking army is getting wounded man now you'll see sometimes just because it's happened does not mean it's over and we have to fight all over again uh, this feels almost a bit buggy that, that he gets two wars instantly after the year next. Not to lull ourselves into a false sense of security. Damn. Once we're done with the ambush, we can just enforce our demands, get, get some a money, bit of gold, and execute the people who so rudely attacked us as we were. I can't wait to play this war. shit, man. Uh, play a count, this, play a random nobody, a make my own shit. A feature that we have brought over from CK2 Agot, which are roads. The, you'll notice that when we look at there was roads in ck2 game of what well there was a road yeah but it didn't really do anything if your city was on the road you got the little money buff Green type here it's going to say wetlands major road in westeros there were two tiers of roads major and minor rules roads which uh increase the supply limit and development growth as well as the movement speed and combat widths of army so there's some okay. there's some pretty good benefits to have i don't you know what i'm seeing Look how many titles. I don't know if this is bugged and they're going to fix this, but look how many titles there are, though. Having a road in your the county. fuck, man? There are also minor Pokemon Encounter Game of Thrones version. In Essos, there will be Valyrian roads, which historically were paved with the fire of dragons. It's a cool little way to make sure that you can move your doom stacks up and down Westeros that without really, really having sick, to man. worry too much. Uh, about attrition bringing your arm ah, when is this releasing man come on bro down to 14,000 shit I want to go to bed an hour ago I gotta really go to bed okay what comes now Low King's guard to play as mega wars as the rulers of the iron throne they do have access to a couple of unique mechanics Arthur Dane, sell me want to show is the king offer Dane motherfucker Jamie Lannister Marshall and bodyguard components within the game and, and introduced by royal court um, that fit the sort of prestige that's associated with the king's guard you can also set an army on a road and force people to fight if they want to get past but that's really realistic uh, right Renly Baratheon's rainbow guard and Daenerys Tar uh, Targaryen's uh, queen's guard will also be accessible to uh, people who don't necessarily hold but have a queen it, it now makes total sense to me that they did robots rebellion as the start because if you make the tv show as a start you have to kind of include Essos and Daenerys Targaryen or maybe even young Griff uh which they don't want to do yet they don't have time for essos yet makes sense to stay in westeros and robert's rebellion is a great start for that to the iron throne so starting with the lord commander our lord commander basically can function as a second marshal with the ability Sick. okay i get that okay we have a king's guard now we have mega wars lastly we arrive at the Whoa. crown jewel of ck3 agot which is the oh. mega war system now look at king's landing allows wow our realm to look like this at the very start and then make its way back into a whole realm uh, just like ck2 yeah of the war uh we have independent considerations for independent rulers god man this is gonna be rulers, so cool uh, as well as rebellious rulers within a single uh de jure realm so i've already taken the liberty of imprisoning robert baratheon mostly because as you will see this is an enormous war spanning uh 6100 baronies and 200,000 200, soldiers though. that's just to start that's before uh different groups start getting involved and different oh. lords declare loyalties other than the ones that are uh set at game start so we're going to go ahead and end this war in a victory for the targaryens you know, everything uh, turns into iron form again. The thing about uh, Mega Wars is that is a, it is a dynamic system. 
so the realm will split apart and then come back together again just like uh, CK2 not just for the war of the user 200,000 people involved in the first war man that can, be the can you show king's landing again man throne. looks so um, sick so this is not the only example of a mega war a mega war may kick off uh naturally within uh your game so we let a day or two pass yeah. and we'll see the realm slowly starting to come together the westerlands uh yeah Last just like CK2. A day, and we get a prompt to bring us to our royal court. Obviously, the Iron Throne Room is not in this trailer because we want to tease that as its own. Oh, thing. they're gonna have an Iron Throne Room, when dude. We announce our release date. Oh, man. So when we are in uh, the, the throne room as the victor. If this would come out tomorrow, I wouldn't know who to play, man. Uh, you know me, I want to play Count, my own little Count, my own little house. I would like to be beyond the wall or maybe a Riverlander. Like how's Red World Part Two, you know? This particular war, we have the I also would like to once play in the Stormlands. I don't know. On the four lords paramount who have defied the Targaryen rule. Now, mind you, this UI up here is here to demonstrate your. That's options. John Aaron. It will likely not be the final version of the UI. Uh, this will be integrated a little bit better into the court scene. Uh, so we have a few options here. Our options to, are to take titles, whether it is a specific title. Um, oh, what the fuck? Lordships. We also have opportunities to take main titles. We will take main titles in certain uh, instances if we depose a ruler as well, as well as the ability to take the entire domain of someone or half of their domain. So we can take every single title that we have. And yes, we know that dementia spells well. Uh, banishment, we can send traitors to the wall. No, he has a cow in his back, dude. To go live out his days at the Night's Watch. Um, or we can choose to execute John Aaron, um, uh, execute him and his family, right? So we can execute but, traitors' family uh, and or their... So when a war's over, you get the aftermath, and you can choose a lot of different stuff you want to do with people. So this is so much John better than Aaron, the base game. Going to so much cooler. John Aaron should die. He was pretty instrumental in making Robert the man he is today. Uh, and so should Lysa Aaron, because, uh, just because, why not, right? So, oh, let shit. my will be done. And now comes Robert Baratheon. Next, we have Every Robert leader comes Baratheon to your court and you, really you make a choice one. with them. He's gonna die. Uh, and this is, is uh, Tully. I'm Hoster actually Tully. gonna pass uh, my sentence on Hoster Tully. Um, but I do actually want to take a hostage, kind of like um, Leon Greyjoy was taken uh, from the Iron Islands and taken by the Starks. So I'm going to take Edmure Tully uh, as my hostage. And then Edward Edward Stark, Stark is going to be sent to the Wall. Um, I can send him to the Wall, Edward. sure that I'm just sending him to the Wall. That is so sick. And my will will be done. And with that... We have dispensed with our trainers, and the realm is whole again. That's so now, cool. Now, if we take a look around, we will notice that Benjen Stark is now the Lord Paramount of the North because Eddard Stark is a is a sworn brother of the Night's Watch, the Riverlands. Uh, Edmure, who is was at our court, uh, yeah, looks like Foster Tully died in the intervening days. Um, so Edmure has <laughs> that title. didn't get the hostage. Uh, and then John and uh, Lysa uh, Aaron are no longer the Lord's Paramount of the Vale. And so Dennis Aaron has taken that over. And then Stannis has taken his brother's title as Lord Paramount. The ah, this is going to be and sick, man. basically it, what happens when you pass judgment. Now, it's going to be sick. What do we have, Dan? Choose different, those... I wonder how the Red Walkers are going to happen. And with that concludes our gameplay trailer teaser, whatever you want to call it, for CK. I hope that that has uh, excited you. That you, that's what you were expecting. Or it really did. Your expectations. We have some other mechanics and things that. I'm just very scared that in the on release date there's going to be bugs and stuff. We're still going to be a bit unplayable. Uh, we'll see. As complete.